What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Michael Chandler speaking on the UFC 276 altercation with Dustin Poirier. With all the big time fights going down at UFC 276 earlier this month, one altercation in the stands did get some attention during the broadcast and on social media. The altercation was between Michael Chandler and Dustin Poirier, two former lightweight title challengers who have no fights scheduled at the moment. Gilbert Burns was sitting near Poirier at the time and captured much of that interaction for the world to see. Earlier this month, Poirier stated in an interview that if he's got something to say to someone, he says it to their face. Poirier feels Chandler continues to disrespect him. Meanwhile, we hadn't heard from Chandler about this specific incident, that is, until UFC London, as Chandler was in England to catch the fights and spoke with the media at the O2 Arena where he was asked about that specific incident. He describes a scene where he walks into the T-Mobile Arena with his wife to sit in their reserved seats, but security changed their seats away. And as they were walking, well, we'll let Chandler pick it up from here. Thing and we walked over. All of a sudden, I heard some chirping, uh, some very vile venom being spit my in my direction. Didn't know if that was being thrown my at me or not. I look over and Dustin Poirier is pointing at me. So um, he obviously had a bone to pick with me that night. Dustin Poirier. It's no secret. He's made it very. It's made it. He's made it very known that he's ready for a fight. He is thirsty. Very very thirsty for a fight. Chandler goes on to talk about how Poirier was simply doing what he says he hates, and that's try to create some unnecessary drama just to force a fight that Chandler feels isn't really worth it. Chandler feels this is the absolute worst way of getting a fight with him. He also feels that Poirier isn't worth his time, given that he feels the diamond has one foot out the door and instead would rather look at a fight against Benil Dariush, or better yet, Conor McGregor. Anything that would get him paid or get him closer to a title shot, which he feels Poirier would not. What do you think about Chandler's comments here about what happened that night? Tom Aspinall issues a statement after retiring from UFC London with a leg injury. There was a good amount of hype for the UFC London main event. A clash between heavyweights, Tom Aspinall, and Curtis Blades. It was also thought that the fight could have title shot implications for the winner, possibly a spot in an interim title fight, something along those lines. But the first 15 seconds of the fight changed all that as Aspinall went down after throwing a kick at Blades, holding his knee while on the ground. The extent of this injury isn't yet known, but judging by Aspinall's reaction, he could be out for at least a few months, possibly longer if surgery is involved. Blades got the TKO victory, but it's unclear if the UFC will see this as a catalyst to give him a potential title shot, or another opponent later down the line to get to the title shot. Aspinall went into this fight having won 8 straight bouts, with wins over Sergei Spivak and Alexander Volkov. His star has been ascending ever since entering the UFC in 2020, but this injury could set him back a bit. For his part, Blade said he wasn't up for a rematch. This is what Aspinall posted after the event on Saturday. Last night wasn't my night. My training camp in the build-up to that fight has been brilliant. Sometimes these things happen. Now is the time to recover, rebuild, and come back stronger. Wanted to say a huge thank you to the UFC, the doctors and paramedics that looked after me but also to the fans for all the messages you've sent and support you've given me in the build-up to the fight and after the freak injury. You're all amazing. Want to thank Curtis for being a true gentleman. It didn't work out how we both wanted, but to come and see me after for a beer makes you a legend in my eyes. Finally, my team and my family. We all know this is elite sport. We live to fight another day. Big love, Tom. There's no public information on the diagnosis of his injury, so until that becomes known, it's hard to gauge how long Aspinall will be out for. As for the title shot picture at heavyweight, champion Francis Ngannou is out for the rest of the year most likely, and it's unclear where he's at in terms of contract negotiations with the UFC, and if he'll go straight into a boxing match against Tyson Fury once he's healthy. September 3rd is UFC Paris, with Cyril Ghosn taking on Tai Tuivasa, which is also thought to have title shot implications. Then you have John Jones's long-awaited debut at heavyweight, as he's rumored to take on Stipe Miocic, the former champion, which some believe could be an interim title fight in itself. We should know more in the coming weeks, but what's your first reaction to Aspinall's knee injury? Paddy Pimblett says this was his last fight at the O2 Arena. Paddy the Batty is the darling of English MMA at the moment, especially after submitting Jordan Levitt on Saturday at UFC London. Near the halfway mark of round number two, Paddy slapped on a rear naked choke on the Monkey King, choking him out for his third straight finish in the octagon. This follows his submission victory over Kazula Vargas at the same O2 arena earlier this year. 
After the fight, Patty let it be known that he feels he's gotten to a point where the UFC will have him fight exclusively on pay-per-view cards and most likely at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. But Patty, a Liverpool native, has his sights set on even bigger venues. This is what he stated during the post-fight press conference to reporters about it. I know I won't be fighting in the O2 again. It's too small. As I say, we'll, we will do Anfield. I promise you now. Dana said that he won't do Anfield, but... He also said women will never fight in the UFC years ago when Ronda Rousey came along. He said he won't do a stadium in the UK, but the baddies came along, so we will. Anfield is the legendary soccer stadium for Liverpool FC, built in 1884 with a capacity of just over 53,000. What do you think about Paddy's win on Saturday? And what do you think about having a UFC event at Anfield? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to stay up to date on all the latest MMA news. Charles Oliveira on Islam Makachev. I've fought tougher people. Former lightweight champion Charles Oliveira hasn't lost a fight since December 2017 when he dropped a TKO loss to Paul Felder. That was over 11 fights ago. He's been on a massive roll since then, beating the likes of Justin Gagey, Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson, and a host of other lightweights, on his way to becoming the undisputed UFC lightweight champion. While he doesn't have the belt at the moment, due to missing weight by half a pound at UFC 274 back in May, he's still considered one of the most dangerous fighters in the UFC, and certainly the world. His clash against Islam Makhachev for the title, set up for UFC 280 in October in Abu Dhabi, is going to be a grappler's delight. While Oliveira holds the most submission wins in both lightweight, featherweight, and also in the history of the promotion, Makhachev is a ground and pound specialist. Many see him as the natural successor to Khabib Nurmagomedov, who retired as an undefeated champion in October 2020 having barely lost a round in his entire career. While Makachev wasn't Oliveira's first choice for this fight, he's not short on confidence going into this bout. This is what he had to say during the UFC 280 press conference in Portuguese. He's dropping in on a wave and that's what he's supposed to do. But if you've seen my record, I've fought tougher people and I'm here to prove that I'll do it again. I'm here to fight. That's what I will do. And you will know who's the champ once again. Makachev has a 10 fight win streak while Oliveira has won 11 straight. If Oliveira is able to not only earn a win over Makachev, but finish him, he could have a litany of opportunities from fighting Conor McGregor to Alexander Volkanovsky to even possibly, and hear me out on this, Khabib. Some say that a finish of Islam could be what incentivizes Khabib to return for just one more fight. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but one can dream, can they? Anyways, what do you think of Oliveira's comments here? And who's your early favorite to win this fight? Will it end in a finish? Molly McCann calls out Antonina Shevchenko to get ready for Valentina. Molly McCann had another great knockout victory during UFC London, putting away Hannah Gold in the first round with a barrage of strikes, including a beautifully timed spinny back elbow. It was Meatball Molly's third win in a row and sixth in the UFC. She's now six and three in the UFC and on a roll after a few stellar performances. 2022 certainly has been very good for Meatball Molly and she wants to continue the momentum by calling out someone whom she considers a great barometer to see where she's at skill-wise. Antonina Shevchenko, the sister of women's flyweight champion Valentina Shevchenko, is an accomplished fighter in her own right, a multiple-time Muay Thai world champion, Taekwondo expert, and UFC fighter who trains day in and day out with whom many consider the best female fighter on the planet. This is what McCann stated after the UFC London event over the weekend about Antonina. But when you talk about legacy, prestige, on it. Like, who's the best in the game? And it's Valentina. Am I Valentina ready yet? No. Lad, come on. <laughs> am I Antonina ready? Let's see. I believe I am. I believe this isn't like a diss. This isn't like, I think I'm going to F you everywhere. No, it's not. But I genuinely think like this is an amazing fight to have. Antonina Shevchenko is coming off a win against Courtney Casey earlier this month by split decision. After having dropped two straight fights, McCann states that she battles with performance anxiety, but this fight and her streak overall is giving her the confidence to finally call out potential opponents. 
What do you think about McCann's callout of Antonina Shevchenko? Are you interested in seeing that fight? And who do you think wins that one? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.